<laughs> to another episode of Mouth Dancing with your host, Young. This is uh, number 16. It's quite a lot of episodes. And I'm pretty proud of my accomplishment. Where my accomplishments, I think each one counts as an accomplishment. So that's pretty cool. I wanted to, I wanted to get serious today, get real with you guys, be a little bit vulnerable. You know, that's so in vogue these days, right? Everyone's wearing their heart on their sleeves lately and telling everyone their deepest, darkest secrets. So I thought I'd get pretty personal today. I wanted to talk about something that I think has held me back in life, and that is my lack of social skills. I think I've got the, you know, the education, the talent, the skills to have a pretty good job and to have me making a lot of money, but I just didn't work hard enough at the social aspect of things when I was younger. That's something I really needed to focus on, but I didn't at all. I didn't put any my attention on that. So it's um, sort of held me back this, I don't know, I guess this lack of emotional intelligence. I think my IQ is decent, but my EQ is very poor. What I needed to do was, you know, go up to the boss and butter them up get in good with all my co-workers, make more of an effort, you know? That's what I needed to do, but I didn't do enough of that. I think part of um, succeeding in life is being a little bit fake once in a while. Sometimes you got to just tolerate people that you don't really like, and you got to be nice to them. you got to be friends with them, make those connections, you know, that you need as you, as you become an adult. And I'm just now realizing this, so starting to put more effort into it, trying to make more friends, hang out with people, you know, new people. Just go up to people you don't know and introduce yourself. If I ever get a job again, I'm unemployed at the moment. I'm going to make sure to, you know, really butter my boss up, kiss their ass. I shouldn't slap them on the ass, though. I'll probably get in trouble for that, like sexual harassment charges or something. But, you know, unless that's what they want, if that's what they want me to do, then I'll do it. Maybe they'll hint at it somehow, like, if you want to get a raise, you need to, you know, offer me some kind of something in return. So maybe I'll have to, like, I don't know, jerk my boss off or finger bang my boss or something. Of course I would okay it with my wife first. You say, is it okay if I do that, you know, because, you know, you're always telling me I should make more connections at work and I should put more effort into that kind of thing. Is it okay if I cut my boss's balls or massage his penis until he ejaculates? Or, you know, if I have a female boss, is it okay if I finger bang her until she has an orgasm? You know, that kind of thing. But you know, it's not just like sexual favors, you know, that's just one aspect of it. I think you also need to, you know, go to the company outings, like join the softball team or something. I did that once, but nothing much came of it because I don't think I put in enough effort To meet the people I was playing softball with, I was just focused on the softball aspect of it, which which is not really the point, right? It's just a means of connecting with people at work. It's not like, it's not about being really good at softball, but I was like really into the softball part of it, which I think was a mistake. So yeah, you know, my new coworkers, I'm going to be like, hey... Let's exchange emails or phone numbers. Let's hang out. 
outside of work even, you know. Some people are probably not going to want to do that. They don't actually want to, like, make friends with everyone in that way. But even then, maybe we could form some other sort of connection, right? Maybe not friends, but acquaintances or golf rivals. I don't really like golf very much, but maybe I should take it up. It's probably good for business purposes, right? But yeah, this is sort of my midlife crisis when I think about it. I'm 40, almost 42 now. And I'm not like out buying a red Corvette or, well, I couldn't afford one anyway. Or, you know, dating a woman half my age. I couldn't do that anyways because I'm married. Or, you know, I don't know what what else. There's all kinds of different things people do when they have a midlife crisis, right? I mean, I still skateboard. Is that a midlife crisis? Or is that more like um, an eternal man-child type of syndrome? I think that's what it is for me because I didn't like stop skating for like 20 or 30 years and then suddenly start again right now when I'm 40 or 50. I've just been doing it more or less since I was a kid. So I think it's a little bit different from a, a midlife crisis. So I was kind of wondering if, like say you're really into video games or BMX biking or comic books, stuff like that, but you've just been into it the whole time. Is that considered a midlife crisis or is that more like you're just someone who's kind of a child forever? I think there's a difference. Like the guy who's been a real estate broker his whole life and then suddenly when he turns 50 or 60 he's like buys a harley he hasn't had a harley since he was like in his 20s or maybe he's never had one before i think that's more of a midlife crisis type of situation or suddenly this someone takes up surfing when they're really old and they've never done it before i mean there's nothing wrong with becoming active and whatnot but I think there's a bit of a midlife crisis sort of thing going on there. Maybe you realize you threw your whole life away just working in the office and you're like, kind of envy those people who are out there surfing or whatever. And you're like, I should have, I should have done that. Or maybe I should do that now. Probably be considered a kook by all the, the real surfers, but if that's what makes you happy, then you should probably do it. Maybe I'm just rationalizing. Maybe I am in a midlife crisis in all aspects of my life. Not just my lack of networking abilities or the fact that I still like to do stuff that I did when I was a teenager. What about someone like Tony Hawk? He's like in his 50s. I think he's in his mid 50s at this point. Or maybe he's 50. He's not having a midlife crisis, is he? I mean, he's just always been doing it. But I do see a lot of guys who are like, uh, you see them on a on an internet forum or something. They're like, I haven't skated in thirty years, and I just picked it up again. I think that's a little bit different from Tony Hawk. It is kind of funny though to see like an adult for some reason on. A skateboard, I'm sure, probably looks pretty funny to some people when they see a grown person on one, but I think it's even funnier to see, like, a, a really old guy, like a middle-aged guy on a BMX or a scooter. There's something kind of funny looking about that. Maybe that's just my perception, though. Maybe I'm just used to seeing um, older guys on skateboards, so... But maybe to people, the general public, people who don't skateboard, maybe they see that and they think, well, that guy's, something's wrong with that guy. He's still playing with a toy. He's like middle-aged. Arrested development. I was wondering about um, skin care for your genitals. Because you know people... Um, 
have like these elaborate routines for their face, right? They have moisturizer and cleansers and all kinds of different things for their faces, right? But isn't it weird if like you just preserve the skin on your face really well so that it looks like, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 years younger than you really are. But then you don't put that same amount of attention on like the skin on your entire body. So then what if you have like, what if you're like 50, but your facial skin looks closer to 40, but then you haven't been really taking care of your junk very well, so it looks like 60 or 70 because it's really beaten up and you don't really moisturize it or anything. That's kind of weird, right? What if you go on a date with someone and they're really mesmerized by your youthful face? And then they see your junk and it's all old looking. That'd be kind of awkward, wouldn't it? So do people do that kind of thing for their penises or vaginas or their balls? Do they apply like skin cream to their balls and their vaginas? I've heard of surgeries for penises and vaginas to like make them, I guess cosmetic surgery to make them more attractive looking. People do that, so... Do they sell special skin creams for, for that area? Seems like they should. No one really talks about it though. I never, I hear people about talking about their, you know, skincare regimen for their face or their, I guess their neck too. But I never hear anything about their skincare regimen for their junk. Or I'm going to get like a, a ball lift. Do guys do that? Because balls get pretty saggy as you get older. I wonder if any guys ever like get the skin tightened up on their scrotums because they want it to look more youthful. Or like, um, I don't know, maybe your vagina's gotten really loose over the years and it's kind of flailing out. Or not flailing, it's like flayed out more. And you want it to be like tighter and more taut. I guess you could get surgery for that. But people don't seem too focused on fixing up those areas. Or maybe they are, but they just don't discuss it because it's kind of private. It's not like you're going to talk to your friends about how you got a ball lift, right? You might tell some people that you got a facelift because they're going to see you and suddenly your face looks really different. Like it looks really pulled back and tight. And they'll be like, oh, did you get work done? Be like, yeah, I got a facelift. But the topic of a ball lift isn't really going to come up in conversation, right? Unless you're, I don't know, maybe you go to a spa together. The kind where you get naked together. Like a, like maybe a Korean spa or a Turkish bath or something. And, they, and your friend sees your balls. And he's like, oh, did you get some work done on those? They look really youthful and, you know, nice and tight. They're not sagging, you know, to like mid-thigh level or your knees. Those are looking pretty youthful there. I wonder if that kind of thing ever happens. I guess you'd have to really examine your friend's balls pretty closely to make that kind of an observation though, right? I guess the next question might be, how much have you been looking at my balls? How did you notice that? I mean, there's nothing not wrong with staring at your friend's balls, I guess. Even if you're straight, that's okay to do. You shouldn't, I don't know, that's just natural curiosity, right? No one's going to admit it, but in the showers, like a public shower, you probably... Take a glance at other dudes junk, right? So sort of compare it to your own. Like, oh, that guy's got a big one or that guy's got a small one. Or that guy's got a, a nice looking one. That one's, that guy's got a weird looking one. That kind of thing happens, so. I guess it wouldn't be too weird if your friend noticed that. Yeah. And I apologize if that sounded judgmental or 
you know, insecure or something. So it's okay to look at your friend's testicles and notice things like that. It's actually probably the sign of a good friend. You're pretty considerate and you're paying attention to what's going on, right? You're not just thinking about yourself. So I, I applaud you, actually, if you notice something like that. Good on you. You're a good, attentive friend. Well, I'm going to close this episode out with um, a little story. So yesterday I was shopping for beer, right, at Wajimaya. And I usually get Kirin beer. It's a Japanese kind of beer. It's a lager. It's a really good good beer actually and they were out of it so I asked one of the employees I said do you have any more of this type of beer and I pointed to you know where the price tag was and the employee said um let me go check in the back and they didn't tell me to go with them or anything but I I followed them back there anyway right because I was I don't know I just kind of did it without thinking about it I don't think I was supposed to be doing it, and they didn't notice me, but I was right behind them. Maybe I was walking quietly or something, but I followed them all the way into the back of the, the store, into the storage area, and then we got to the refrigerated area. There was a bunch of, um, you know, like cases of beer back there, and then that, and then the employee was looking around for the kid in beer. And I said, oh, do you think you have any? And the person like freaked out when they heard my voice because I don't think they were aware that I was there. And they, you know, bolted upright and were like, what the hell are you doing back here? And I said, oh, shit, I thought I could come back here with you. And they said, no, you need to get the hell out of here. So I said, I'm sorry. And I went, went back out and I just waited by the doors and the employee came back out with like a really pissed off look on his face and... He was like, sorry, we don't have any more Keating beer. So I said, oh, okay, thanks for checking. And he didn't reply after that. He was just kind of went off in a huff. So I guess, mm, I guess there's a lesson in that for us. Don't just um, unbeknownst to somebody, follow them. Because you might startle them. Make sure you make make it known to them that you're following them, like, Maybe clear your throat, you know, on the way there, or cough or something. Or maybe say, hey, is it okay if I follow you? Let them know. That's my advice to all of you out there. And also, you know, that goes along with my advice from the beginning of the episode. Uh, make sure to keep up on your networking and your socializing, because that's a really important thing in life. You don't want to become all isolated. You gotta develop those connections early on. That's how you succeed in life. That's a lesson I learned a little bit late, but I'm trying to make up for it now. And I'm, I think I'm doing a pretty good job, so. Wish me luck. And I wish all of you luck in your endeavors. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye.